Hello, this is Jules Good from the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network here to tell you all about OIRA meetings, an important advocacy tool. Part one, what are we advocating for? Here's the background. There's an important section of a law called the Fair Labor Standards Act. The section is called 14C. 14C says that employers can pay disabled workers less than minimum wage. This is not fair. Disabled workers should be able to make at least minimum wage. Disabled workers should be paid the same as non-disabled workers doing similar jobs. Disabled workers should have the same chance to improve their careers as non-disabled workers doing similar jobs. Almost all 14C workplaces keep disabled workers separated from non-disabled workers. We should be able to work with all kinds of people. Right now, the only non-disabled people that many disabled people work with are their bosses. We should be able to work with both disabled and non-disabled people doing the same jobs as us. Not all employers can pay disabled workers less than minimum wage. Employers that want to do this have to apply for a 14C certificate. The certificate is a piece of paper that says an employer can pay disabled workers less than minimum wage. This is also called subminimum wage. Right now, there are 780 employers in the U.S. that have or have applied for 14C certificates. Over 38,500 people are being paid subminimum wage in these unfair conditions. So what can we do about it? Right now, the U.S. Department of Labor is thinking about what to do about 14C. We want to convince the U.S. Department of Labor to get rid of 14C. Getting rid of 14C means that employers would no longer be able to pay disabled people less than minimum wage. We also want to tell the U.S. Department of Labor about ways that disabled people can get good jobs that pay fairly instead. One way the U.S. Department of Labor can get rid of 14C is through something called a proposed rule. A proposed rule is an idea for a rule that a government agency asks the public to give feedback on. The U.S. Department of Labor said that they will be making a proposed rule about 14C soon. While they're writing the proposed rule, they want to know what we think the rule should say. One way that people can tell the U.S. Department of Labor what to put in the proposed rule about 14C is by meeting with the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, or OIRA, which some people pronounce OIRA. The rest of this video will explain what an OIRA meeting is, how to set up an OIRA meeting, and what you can say during an OIRA meeting. Part 2. All about OIRA meetings. Why do we want self-advocates to set up an OIRA meeting? Well, part of OIRA's job is helping government agencies decide what to make rules about. OIRA makes sure that ideas for rules are important and effective. If OIRA hears from a lot of people about 14C, they will be able to help the Department of Labor make a rule about 14C that would have a good impact on disabled workers. In other words, the more OIRA hears from self-advocates, the more likely it is they will listen to us. So how can someone set up an OIRA meeting? Let's walk through the steps together. First, we'll go to the meeting request page. The link for this page is in the description of this video. In the box under enter an RIN, we'll enter this set of numbers and letters. One, two, three, five, hyphen, AA, one, four. Once you type that in and click enter, you'll be taken to this page. You should see that next to title, it says Employment of Workers with Disabilities under Section 14C of the Fair Labor Standards Act. That's the one we want. If you get an error message or a different title comes up, go back to step one and make sure that you've entered the correct RIN. Once you're here, you're going to enter the information the page asks for. Boxes with a red asterisk are required meaning that you won't be allowed to submit the request if those boxes are empty. You do not have to enter information in boxes that don't have a red asterisk, but you can. When you're done filling in the boxes, click Verify. You will get a message telling you to check your email. You should get an email from noreply at gsa.gov. Open the email and click the button that says Schedule your EO meeting now. A new tab will open and you'll see this page. 
If anyone else is coming to the meeting with you, click add attendees and enter their information. If you are going to the meeting as part of a group, you can say what group you're a part of in the affiliation box. If no one else is coming to the meeting with you, you do not need to click add attendees. If someone decides they want to come to the meeting with you, make sure you add them using the add attendees button by 11.59 p.m. the day before the meeting. You are not allowed to add more attendees on the day of the meeting. Anyone can call into the meeting, but if they are not added as an attendee on the website, their name will not show up on the official meeting notes. The last box on the page asks about scheduling and access needs. If you need any accommodations to make the meeting accessible for you, you can write about them in this box. If you know there are certain days where you can or cannot meet, you can write about that too. For example, if you usually aren't able to attend a meeting on Wednesdays, you can say, I cannot meet on Wednesdays. Once you're done, click Submit Meeting Request. You will get another email from OIRA to schedule your meeting. The email might also ask you more questions about who you are and why you want to meet with OIRA. The person who emails you will help you find a date and time to meet with OIRA. If the first date and time OIRA suggests does not work for you, you can respond to the email and ask for a different date or time. The person who emails you will also send you the meeting phone number and any other information you need to attend the meeting. The email will give you a link to a website where you can confirm your meeting date and time. If you do not confirm your meeting date and time within two days of getting the email, OIRA will give the meeting time to someone else. Make sure you confirm your meeting date and time as soon as you can after getting the email. The last step is to upload any written documents or data that you want OIRA to see. This could be things like a written testimony or story about your experience. You can also upload studies or articles that are related to other things you're saying in the meeting. If you want to upload anything, you have to do it by 11.59 p.m. the day before the meeting. And that's it. Congrats on scheduling your first OIRA meeting. Part three, how to go to your OIRA meeting. OIRA meetings happen over the phone. When your meeting is confirmed over email, OIRA will send you a phone number and some other numbers. About five minutes before your OIRA meeting, call the phone number. You will be asked to enter a meeting number access code. You can enter the meeting number access code using your phone's keypad. Make sure you enter the exact number that is emailed to you. Follow the instructions the voice on the phone tells you. Lastly, you will be asked to enter the meeting password, which is another set of numbers. Since this is a lot of numbers to deal with in a short amount of time, you will want to have all of the numbers in front of you before you dial the phone number. If you enter the wrong numbers, the call will end. If this happens, call the phone number again to start the process again. We know this process is not accessible for a lot of people. Unfortunately, this is the only way OIRA does meetings right now. Now that we know how to log on to an OIRA meeting, let's talk about what happens during the meeting. Part four, what happens during an OIRA meeting? The first thing that happens once everyone has signed on to the OIRA meeting phone call is introductions. The people on the call from OIRA will say their names and titles. Then you will introduce yourself and anyone else you brought on the call with you. Next, you will share your testimony. Your testimony is the main thing you want to tell OIRA on the call. Here are some important things you can say in your testimony. The most important thing to say is, disabled workers should be able to make at least minimum wage. Disabled workers should be paid the same as non-disabled workers doing similar jobs. Disabled workers should have the same chance to improve their careers as non-disabled workers doing similar jobs. We should be able to work with all kinds of people. Right now, many disabled people only work with non-disabled people who are their bosses. We should be able to work with both disabled and non-disabled people doing the same jobs as us. It's really important to say all of those parts, not just the part about subminimum wage. If you have worked in a sheltered workshop or a subminimum wage job, you can talk about what happened there. If you used to work in a sheltered workshop and now you have a job outside of a sheltered workshop, you can talk about what making that change was like for you. If you have gotten employment support through a job coach or another type of help, you can talk about that. You can also talk about anything your employer does to support you at your job, like giving you accommodations for your disability. If you have had a hard time finding accessible, fairly paid work because of your disability, you can talk about that. 
you can talk about what types of support would help you be able to work. Since the meetings are only 30 minutes long, you will probably want to write out your testimony and read it during the call. ASAN can help you write your testimony. You can email me, Jules Good, at jgood at autisticadvocacy.org, and I can help you write your testimony and answer questions. After you share your testimony, the people on the call from OIRA may ask you questions. If they don't have any questions for you, they will end the call. That's it. Congratulations on going to your first OIRA meeting. OIRA meetings are an important tool for self-advocates to help the government make important choices. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and take action on subminimum wage. Remember, if you have questions about this video, OIRA meetings, or writing your testimony, you can email jgood at autisticadvocacy.org to get answers and support. Thank you.